Happy Wednesday, 7th graders. Today is Wednesday, September 9th. Uh, we're going to go over the agenda for the day. And then this is a teaching video, so I'll actually go through the parts of the lesson that we're going to complete. The learning targets um, starting today and running through next Wednesday with our cold case project are I can use effective research strategies, I can evaluate resources, and I can curate resources to make connections and draw conclusions. Everything that we are using for the next week can be found in the cold, ca cold case research folder in Schoology. We're going to do a little introductory activity, the lunchroom fight lesson, and there's an assignment that goes with that in Schoology. It's just three quick questions to get you thinking before our class discussion. We will use some slides to learn about writing good research questions. That's slides 6 through 11. You'll read a short article called Six Historical Mysteries to give you some background information on mysteries in American history, and then choose a topic that you would like to research over the next week. You are not limited just to the six stories that are found in that article that you read. We are going to use a document called the Cold Case Task Guide to organize everything that we're doing for this project. So we'll take a look at that in Schoology and talk about how to use it today. And then you'll have some time to start your research. Um, total for the project, you will each need at least two sources. We'll get to that later. You don't need to worry about that right now. So your homework for today is to come to class tomorrow with four potential theories that would solve your mystery, four explanations of what might have happened. Some of them are going to be more reasonable and more logical than others. It is okay to include theories in your list that you believe could not possibly be true. There are some crazy ones out there. So let's start with that lunchroom fight lesson. Um, we're going to use the cold case slideshow. It's linked here. This is a hyperlink. Again, you can also find it in Schoology. So the first slide here reviews the learning targets. We already went over those. I'm going to read you a little story. Imagine that you are the principal of a school and you just found out there was a fight in the cafeteria during lunch. You've asked many students and teachers who witnessed the fight to write down what they saw and who they think started the fight. Unfortunately, you've received many conflicting accounts that disagree not only as to who started the fight, but also as to who was involved and when the fight even started. It's important to remember that no one is just plain lying. So I would like you to open up the lunchroom fight assignment in Schoology that will help you organize your ideas and get ready for a class discussion. I'll show you where to find that now. Here's our Schoology course. Notice that the document is posted here as an assignment, so you could open it here. You're going to complete it and submit it in class today. It can also be found in the cold case research folder. This is what we'll be using over the next week. So if you open the assignment, yours looks a little bit different than mine. This is the teacher view, but you'll have a blue button here that allows you to open it and then view the document. So here we go. You'll find the same paragraph that I just read aloud to you and then three questions. For each of the questions, you're gonna answer in the yellow text box. And my guess is that you'll have a list, that you'll have multiple ideas for each of the questions. The first one says, why would there be different stories of the event if no one is just plain lying? So write your thoughts in the yellow text box here. Then the second question says, what are the different types of people who might have seen this fight? Maybe friends of those involved in the fight versus people who are bystanders and don't know anyone involved. Think about more than just the teachers and students who might have been in the room. What different groups would you have within teachers and students? And then lastly, what might make one person's story more believable or more plausible than another person's? Write your ideas in this yellow box and then keep the document open. We're going to use it for a class discussion. When we are done with our discussion, I'll ask you to go back to Schoology and hit the submit button. Now, we're going to talk in class about the, um, the situation that we just read about and brainstormed about. 
Um, these are the questions we'll be going over as a class. And if you are not able to participate in class live, then these are questions that you should think about right now. Why might people see or remember things differently if they're experiencing the same event? Do their prior experiences, their location in the room, their relationships with those involved impact how they perceive something? Who might have an interest in one student getting in trouble over another? Who was standing where? Could everyone present see the whole event? What about the plausibility of the stories themselves? Is anything being exaggerated? Do the stories fit into what we know about students' prior histories? Is this a student who often gets in fights or never does? Um, are these two students best friends? Do they have any past history? Does the story seem believable or is it really far-fetched? What about time? Do stories change over time? If you told me a story today and then I asked you to tell me the same story in a week or a month or a year, would your story change? Does what we remember change over time? So then does time make the way someone remembers something more or less trustworthy? Um, what about physical evidence? Is there anything you might see that would impact what you believe? Bruises, objects that have been, that have gone missing, things that were thrown, those sorts of things. So again, that's a class discussion we'll have. And if you're doing this on your own at home, those are things I want you to think through. So the key idea is that all of these things apply when we study history. The way events are interpreted, remembered, explained, and judged to be trustworthy um, ties back to what we were just talking about. So as we go through the course this semester and as you research events this week, keep that in mind. You're going to find different people's accounts and it's important to look at where they're coming from. Do they have a bias? What's their perspective? Were they there or have they curated resources? Are they trying to persuade you to believe a certain way? Um, are they looking at this right after it happened or a long way in the past? Um, similar to the principle, historians try to figure out what happened in the past. And that's what you're going to do this week with a mystery. So pause right now. The next thing you are going to do is read the article that was linked in our agenda and also linked in Schoology about six historical mysteries. So you can click the hyperlink here or you can go to the link in Schoology um, and read that article to get ideas. It's not a very long article, but it introduces six commonly known mysteries in American history. Um, and as you're reading, think about which one of those you might like to research or if there's something else you're aware of in American history that you would like to research, make sure you run that by your teacher. And then when kids are finished reading, we're going to talk about writing research questions and how to actually go about starting your research. So let's talk about research questions. Step one is to decide what you know and what you want to know. What do you already know about your topic? What do you want to know that will re what do you not know but would like to know that would require you to do more research? What information could possibly help you understand your topic better? Use that information to help you develop questions that will drive your research. There are several types of research questions. They get at more of the why and the so what questions. These are not yes or no questions, but they address the significance of the topic in history. They might look at cause and effect, what caused that event to take place and what effects did it have? Change in continuity, what has changed since this thing happened and what has remained the same? Um, they might look at someone's perspective. How did people in the past view their world? What did people living at the time of the event think about what was happening? What were their motivations for their actions? Turning points, did this event or action or decision impact future things? How does the past help us to make sense of the present? How can we use the past? So let's practice. Um, a research question is just that. It's a question that you will answer as you do by doing some research. Um, here's a not very good research question. Was Jackie Robinson a member of the Dodgers? It's not a great question because it's a yes or no question. It doesn't push you to do any more research. 
So how could we change that? Maybe we could look at how Jackie Robinson became a member of the Dodgers or what did Jackie Robinson accomplish when he was a member of the Dodgers? Or why is it important that Jackie Robinson became a member of the Dodgers? How did that change history? How was it a turning point in Major League Baseball? Um, here's another example. Who did the US fight in World War II? Not a great question because even though it's not a yes or no question, I can answer it with really minimal research and I can list countries. A better research question might be, um, what were the causes of the United States joining World War II? Or what was the impact of the United States joining World War II? Um, which countries did the United States work with and how did they accomplish their goals? So for your cold case research project, you're going to read um, that article if you haven't yet. And then this week you will work with a partner, someone assigned by your teacher, to help you um, to work together and figure out the answer to a historical mystery. You can research one of the mysteries in that article, or you can choose one of your own. And your goal today is to start finding theories that explain that mystery. So in Schoology, you need to open up the assignment called the Cold Case Task Guide. We'll look at it in just a minute. Both you and your partner need to complete your own task guide. This is not a document that you're sharing. We'll look at it in just a minute to talk about what you need to do. Um, today, you need to work with your partner to choose a topic, write some research questions, and start finding theories that explain the mystery that you chose. When you come to class tomorrow, steps one through three of the task guide should be completed, and that includes having four theories listed in your task guide. So let's look at that document really quickly. Each of you has your own copy of the task guide. This is what it looks like. Um, you are creating a case file. It says history is filled with unsolved mysteries. Your task in this research project is to choose one of those mysteries and present a plausible, that means a likely theory to explain it. You will research a variety of primary and secondary sources to uncover possible theories and the clues that support them. After you conclude your research, you will create a case file presentation that includes background on the mystery, the most plausible theory, evidence that supports it, and a bibliography. So step one is to choose your cold case. If you wanted to um, do one that was in the article, you can just highlight it here. If you've come up with something else and gotten it approved by your teacher, then you should write it in. Then turn it into a question. What's the overall question that you are going to answer with this project? Maybe, how did Jimmy Hoffa disappear? Or what happened to the Mary Celeste and why does it matter? Then start your research. There are some helpful links in Schoology, like Sweet Search and Elm, that will get you better information than something like Wikipedia might. Although that's a good place to go for just a snapshot to get a good background picture of what's um, of your mystery. After you look through some of those sources, come up with some competing theories of your cold case below. It says at least two. I would like you to try between the two of you to come up with four. So you and your partner should have the same four theories. That means coming up with two each. You may choose to return to this step and add more theories or change some of the theories you initially came to cross, across as you research. But again, when you come to class tomorrow, steps one through three should be completed. Do not submit in Schoology. Tomorrow, we will look at how to take notes. Good luck today.